Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second episode of Right Eyes Fun Vision Friday Facebook Live. Today, we are talking about how to restore functional vision and function in general after you've suffered a traumatic brain injury. And I am so lucky to be joined by Dr. Ash. He's at the Equinox Wellness Center in Vancouver, Canada, and his patient, Colette Brown, Colette suffered a traumatic brain injury back in 2016. And she's going to share her story today. And unfortunately, that incident left her with a lot of functional vision issues and function issues in general. She wasn't able to drive. She wasn't able to care for her kids in the way that she wanted to. And simple things that we all take for granted, like even being able to play a guitar. But she is back in action after working with Dr. Ash. And one of the tools he uses is actually the right eye system. So we're going to talk about her journey and how the right eye system fits into all of that. Welcome, Dr. Ash. Welcome, Colette. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Dr. Ash, I want to start with you. I want to give the audience a little bit of background and context. What, what is Equinox Wellness Center? What do you do there for your patients? Well, um, Equinox Integrative Wellness Center has been established about a couple of years ago based on a model that I brought back from California when I was practicing there. It's a multidisciplinary center which employs physiotherapists, uh, naturopaths, uh, acupuncturists, massage therapists, nutritionists, and myself, and another chiropractor uh, that we just added. I've been Carrick trained for the past 10 years. I did my fellowship with Dr. Carrick since 2004, and uh, every single time that I go through these classes, uh, I learned something new, and I still feel like I have no idea what we are, where we are, what we do with the brain. However, the amount of information is massive, and we try to be as concise and as thorough as we can with our patients to not only treat them in a way that they feel better, but give them hope where they can move on in their lives um, with their hope instilled in them and notice that there is a better life out there than their symptoms where they get stuck with. So my job as an ex-concussion patient myself, which actually brought me to what I do right now, um, has been really going through this journey every day with my patients and try to put myself in their shoes on a daily basis and see what we can do collaboratively and hopefully bring some sense to their lives and uh, hopefully make them feel better and function at a better rate. So Integrative Wellness Center has been pretty good in the past couple of years here that we are seeing a lot of awesome patients that we are giving them hope uh, to move on in their lives. That's wonderful. And one of the patients that you've given a lot of hope and a lot of success to is Colette, who we have here today. Colette, I want to start by going backwards before we talk about your journey. And I would love for you to share with everyone out there what happened? What led you to have to go see Dr. Ash and, and go on this journey? Well, I was in January of 2016, and the dysfunction that followed um, from the concussion, the brain injury, and the whiplash um, immobilized me. I was not able to shower or walk even. My balance was off. I, my head, my eyes felt like they weren't even in my sockets properly. I didn't understand um, what was wrong. I went to the doctors. They told me to rest and take brain breaks. They gave me medications to try to help with some of the symptoms, but they ended up just causing side effects. Um, it took me two years of searching and a lot of dark room and bed rest and head pressure, all of it, until I found Dr. Ash. And within a month of working with him, he had cleared a lot of the post-concussion syndrome. So. Um, my quality of life went up right away after the first week intensive and we just continued working together and it's just been pro progress ever since every time. That's amazing. And I know one of the things that you said to me when we were talking before we went live was that, you know, you never were able to really validate and see what was wrong. You knew what was wrong. But to the outside world, to doctors, to everyone that you were working with, it was like a mystery. So can you talk a little bit about how when you first went in for that assessment, and Dr. Ash, feel free to jump in as well. When you first went in for your assessment with Dr. Ash, 
how the right eye system and how what Dr. Ash does help to bring to light exactly what was going on. Well, right away, he was able to identify some dysfunction, which nobody had even assessed me for yet. Or in two years, nobody had tools to even assess the dysfunction I was experiencing. So he right away, he identified dysfunction. And I had hope right away, because he could see it. <laughs> that was a big, a big step in recovery is to identify dysfunction in the first place. That is such an amazing feeling to know that what you've been dealing with is is validated. It does give you a lot of hope. I know I've been in, in your shoes before. Dr. Ash, can you talk a little bit about and give the audience context the process? When someone like Colette comes through your door, obviously they do get evaluated with the right eye system, but talk a little bit about the evaluation process and then from there, what you do to help them get back to proper function. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the biggest... I would say the biggest issues that the medical community, including some of my colleagues out there have, is that they have no capacity to listen to the patients. That's the problem. I was a patient before, and I went through what Colette went through probably a lot less than what she has. Um, but it, I've, been, I've become very sympathetic to the aspect of trying to listen to the patient. Don't label things. Don't go for the symptom. Listen and see what you can find. 50% of your diagnosis is in what the patient tells you. Um, and so when I listen, I pay attention to things that I have had to go through myself, where most doctors and physicians at the time, they would call it psychosomatic or it's only in your head. Or uh, if you have a headache, here's take the medication, see if that goes away. If it doesn't go away, come back. Let's see what we can do. It's like, look, you don't understand. I don't have 30 days to go through this medication and see what we can do later. I want to see what we can do now, and that's why I'm here. And so the process in my office is that when the patient comes in, the biggest part of the um, assessment is really listening to the patient, see the limitations, see the aspects are, are more bothersome to the patients and where they cannot find hope in. So then after that, about 20, 25 minutes of uh, interviewing the patient, then I go through some of the neuromusculoskeletal assessment uh, with a big emphasis on the vestibular system when it comes to concussions. It is probably one of the areas of it's like untapped or um, I would say underestimated areas. And everybody thinks, well, a lot of my colleagues still think vestibular system issues, you have to have nystagmus, you have to have dizziness and nausea all the time. But it's far from the truth is you can have a little dysfunction, but causing a lot of trouble in the functionality of day-to-day -day functionality of the patient. And so my assessment is about 30, 35 minutes, used to be two hours. Now I'm getting better at it and more provision. <laughs> so, um, and then whatever I cannot detect, I rely on right eye. The right eye system has been phenomenal addition to the practice where I can, you know, there are times that I'm tired or, I'm not sure, stress uh, with different patients. And I need to rely on a technology where it's not under stress, doesn't use empathy, uses you know algorithms to find out what is the dysfunction. <laughs> and so right eye has been great to show some of the limitations that I have as a practitioner to uh, kind of direct me in the right place and guide me so I can actually extrapolate the information uh, and put it on top of whatever I've done with the patient, musculoskeletal assessments, um, balance assessment, uh, VNG assessments, and then put that together and, and come out with a, a concrete evidence and treatment out, um, treatment plan for the patient and hopefully get a great outcome for the patient. So when they walk out of that office, they go with a glimpse of hope that they know something great is going to happen. That's yeah, great. they they feel like they're on the right track and on the right path. And I know Colette, for you, being able to visualize and see the tests and see your progress, that's meant a lot. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what it's been like to visually see your progress? Um, well, it was um, shocking that there was dysfunction that I had been living with for so long and trying to engage in life with for so long. Um, so I had to kind of come to terms with it. And then once, once I, you know, wrapped my head around that my eyes were actually just darting all over the place, like not in my head properly, really. Um, 
it, it um, was a good opportunity to work hard. Uh, like it gave me the push to know that I, if I work hard and do the homework and have the discipline and follow the therapy program, that I will make progress as well. So it was um, a motivator. Absolutely. That's a great point. We hear that from a lot of patients that it helps with consistency, which Dr. Ash, I'm sure you can attest to that consistency is key when you're dealing with a recovery program. Absolutely. My colleague has been one of the most consistent, one of the most phenomenal patients I have had in, in years. And I, I know Colette and her husband, they have been doing phenomenal in providing things that most patients wouldn't do or they would not seem to capable of doing. But Colette has been phenomenal in doing, following the instructions, following the protocols and adding to it and trying new things that she's teaching me as well. Look, this is, um, you know, the patient doctor relationship when it comes to this type of dysfunctionalities and if it's a long-term issue, you'll notice that it becomes very symbiotic in nature and doctors and patients learn from each other. And it, it's an ongoing learning experience for all of us. And we try to um, come up with solutions for, for Colette and patients like Colette. And I have to be on top of it every day, every night to see more research, see more exercises, see what else can we do and how can we make this better? Because Colette getting better means that Colette will tell other people who are suffering and they're stuck in a dark room to uh, create hope for them. And when they come out of that room and there is hope, there's a happier community, period. I mean, that's how it is. You know, it's a, very, it's a, it's a trickle effect in a sense. 100%. And for anyone who's tuning in, Colette and Dr. Ash, you as well, are very active on Twitter. I'll post their Twitter handles. You should follow them because they are a beacon of hope for anybody that's going through this, both on the patient and on the practitioner side. Um, Colette, I would love to hear in your words what life is like now. You know, you've been at this for a while with Dr. Ash. What has it been, about a year now that you've been working with him? Just and I'd, and I'd love to hear what life's like now. What can you do again? Well, when you wanted to know what was wrong before, I had to really think about it because um, now I get up and I shower and I make lunches for the kids and I get them to school and I come home and I clean up. And then I'll have a rest. But before, I, I wouldn't be able to have a shower unassisted. Um, I had a bar in my shower. Um, after I couldn't look up in the shower and wash my hair or else I'd fall over. Um, it literally has affected every part of my life. And um, I can do, like, I couldn't do anything before. Everything I did before caused awful symptoms and would put me out. So it's everything. I have a quality of life now and there is hope. I mean, these are really basic things that we all take for granted, you know, being able to wash our hair or tie our shoes. This is just basic everyday stuff that we don't even think about. So it's amazing um, what you've been able to accomplish and, and do in a year. I'd love to take a minute. And for anyone tuning in, we're talking with Dr. Ash out at uh, the Equinox Wellness Center in Vancouver and Colette Brown, his patient about regaining function after traumatic, traumatic brain injury. Um, I would love for each of you um, to share your biggest piece of advice for a patient or even a practitioner out there um, that is going through traumatic brain injury. Colette, you go first. Um, okay, it's don't give up. Um, identify the dysfunction. Find someone to identify the dysfunction. It's not all in your head, but it is all in your head, and it's real. And it can be identified and there is hope. You just have to identify it and then find the proper therapy. Um, and nutrition is a huge, a huge aspect of my recovery. Um, he's put me on a neurometabolic approach to brain health and it's uh, a key in my recovery, definitely. And not to give up, the brain is magnificent. Neuroplasticity is our gift. And if we work hard, we can re-pattern and retrain our brains after brain injuries. 100%. Thank you, Colette, for saying what I've said before. So I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> You've done an awesome job. Um, it, it is very true. For people who are out there suffering from it, we understand that there is, this is in its infancy. Not many people were aware of the fact that 
even the slightest amount of concussion can really derange your lifestyle, your quality of life. One thing that I will never forget about Colette's um, first day of recovery post um, the neurointensive that we did is that Colette was able to actually throw a birthday party for her five-year-old. That's something that hasn't done in a while. She couldn't even was imagine late. that. Was it? It there. was a late. It was about six months late. But That's I right. That was right. We did it. We had it. We had the birthday, and I was so pleased. And to me, that was the biggest achievement in my life, I think, as a practitioner. You know, a lot of times we take things for granted, but true, true that we have to start looking for doctors and practitioners who do things in a collaborative manner, people who understand the concept, people probably some of the doctors who have gone through this before. I would I would dare to say, you know, interview some of those practitioners and say if you have if they've ever had a concussion before and how did they feel? How did they get over it? And understand that if you haven't been through it, it's very difficult to understand what your patients are going through. But I would encourage patients that to see at least someone with uh, Carrick trained. Uh, it's one of the best starts, to be honest with you. I don't want to be biased, but that's how it is. You know, the reality of life is that probably people who are trained with Dr. Carrick are the best trained one to, to deal with concussions and people to give them hope, to give them hope. Hope is the beginning. And then from there on, you have to work it up just the way as Colette has done in the past year. And she's been doing an amazing job every day that I, every time that I see her. I am just baffled by the level of persistence and perseverance that she has shown using neuroplasticity to her advantage. And that's fantastic. So as she said, neuroplasticity is the biggest gift to us. Use it. And Dr. Ash, I have to ask you, how important is it as well that we seek out practitioners that are using the latest technology like right eye, for example, knowing you know that you're going to somebody that's not only trained right, but is using the latest technology to help you get where you need to be? Absolutely. This is, as I mentioned, this is a multidisciplinary, multi, uh, multi-integrative type of uh, approach uh, for many conditions, neurological conditions, not just concussions. It could be with anything. Um, and I think it's super important to use and rely on some latest technologies out there simply because our, eye, our eyes as practitioners can fail. Look, if I have too many coffees or too little, if I'm sleeping one day and I'm not paying attention, I can miss the biggest clues that the patient is showing me. Why not rely on a piece of technology that is, it can extrapolate that information. It can show you that aspect of it. And hopefully it can rely to some extent on it, not to be, not to hang your head on it, but use it as a tool that you can compile with other things that you have found to come up with the best uh, plan of care for your patients. So absolutely, I encourage patients to, to look for people who are using technologies such as Right Eye, uh, which is, again, one of the best tools I have seen in years out there for what we do, frankly. So thank you for that. Thank you, Dr. Ash, for taking time out of your really crazy day. I know you're busy there at the office helping patients. And thanks, thank you so much to Colette for sharing your journey. I know it's going to give a lot of people out there hope. Um, again, I will post up their handles below so you can follow them and follow Colette's journey. And we will be back in a few weeks with our next episode of Fun Vision Friday Facebook Live. Thank you again and have a great Friday, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.